Ariane 5. Ariane 5 is a European heavy lift launch vehicle that is part of the Ariane rocket family, an expendable launch system used to deliver payloads into geostationary transfer orbit GTO or low Earth orbit, LEO. Ariane 5 rockets are manufactured under the authority of the European Space Agency, ESA, and the French Spatial Agency Centre National d'Etudes Spatials. Airbus Defence and Space is the prime contractor for the vehicles, leading a consortium of other European contractors. Ariane 5 is operated and marketed by Ariane Space as part of the Ariane program. The rockets are launched by Ariane Space from the Guiana Space Centre in French Guiana. Ariane 5 succeeded Ariane 4 but was not derived from it directly as Ariane 5 was developed from scratch. Ariane 5 has been refined since the first launch in successive versions, G, G+, Gs, ESA, and most recently, S. ESA originally designed Ariane 5 to launch the Hermes spaceplane, and thus intended it to be human-rated from the beginning. Two satellites can be mounted using a SOTA carrier, System de Lancement Double Ariane, Ariane Double Launch System. Three main satellites are possible depending on size using Speltra, Structure per 2's external lancement triple Ariane, Ariane triple launch external carrier structure. Up to eight secondary payloads, usually small experiment packages or mini satellites, can be carried with an ASAP, Ariane structure for auxiliary payloads, platform. Ariane 5's cryogenic H173 main stage, H158 for Ariane 5G, G+, and G's is called the EPC, Etage Principal Cryotechnique Cryotechnic Main Stage. It consists of a large tank 30.5 meters high with two compartments, one for liquid oxygen and one for liquid hydrogen, and a Vulcane 2 engine at the base with a vacuum thrust off. The H-173 EPC weighs about 189 tons, including 175 tons of propellant. After the main cryogenic stage runs out of fuel, it re-enters the atmosphere for an ocean splashdown. Attached to the sides are two P-241, P-238 for Ariane 5G and G+, solid rocket boosters, SRBs or EAPs from the French Etagist Acceleration Opputer, each weighing about 277 tons full and delivering a thrust of about. They are fueled by a mix of ammonium perchlorate, 68%, and aluminum fuel, 18%, and HTPB, 14%. They each burn for 130 seconds before being dropped into the ocean. The SRBs are usually allowed to sink to the bottom of the ocean, but, like the Space Shuttle solid rocket boosters, they can be recovered with parachutes, and this has occasionally been done for post-flight analysis. Unlike Space Shuttle SRBs, Ariane 5 boosters are not reused, the most recent attempt was for the first Ariane 5S emission. One of the two boosters was successfully recovered and returned to the Guiana Space Center for analysis. Prior to that mission, the last such recovery and testing was done in 2003. The French M51 SLBM shares a substantial amount of technology with these boosters. In February 2000, the suspected nose cone of an Ariane 5 booster washed ashore on the South Texas coast and was recovered by beachcombers before the government could get to it. The second stage is on top of the main stage and below the payload. The Ariane 5G used the EPS, Ataja Propergol Stockable Storable Propellant Stage, which is fueled by monomethylhydrazine, MMH, and nitrogen tetroxide. It also has 10 tons of storable propellants. The EPS was improved for use on the Ariane 5G plus Comages, and S. Ariane 5S uses the Escape, Ataj Superior Cryotechnique Cryogenic Upper Stage, which is fueled by liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. The EPS upper stage is capable of multiple ignitions, first demonstrated during Flight V-26 which was launched on October 5, 2007. This was purely to test the engine, and occurred after the payloads had been deployed. The first operational use of restart capability as part of a mission came on March 9, 2008, when two burns were made to deploy the first automated transfer vehicle into a circular parking orbit, followed by a third burn after ATV deployment to orbit the stage. This procedure was repeated for all subsequent IPT flights. The payload and all upper stages are covered at launch by a fairing, which is jettisoned once sufficient altitude has been reached, typically above 100 kilometers. The fairing is also used for aerodynamic stability and protection from heating during supersonic flight and acoustic loads. Launch system status the Ariane 5 commercial launch price for launching a mid-sized satellite in the lower position is approximately 
competing for commercial launches in an increasingly competitive market. The heavier satellite launched in the upper position on a typical dual satellite Ariane 5 launch is priced higher, on the order of the total launch price of an Ariane 5, which can transport up to two satellites to space, one in the upper and one in the lower positions, is around 150 million euro as of January 2015. The Ariane 5 me, midlife evolution, was in development until 2015 and seen as a stopgap between, and the new Ariane 6. With first flight planned for 2018, it would have become ESA's principal launcher until the arrival of the new Ariane 6 version. The Ariane 5 me uses a new upper stage, with increased propellant volume, powered by the new Vinci engine. Unlike the HM7B engine, it can restart several times, allowing for complex orbital maneuvers such as insertion of two satellites into different orbits, direct insertion into geosynchronous orbit, planetary exploration missions, and guaranteed upper stage deorbiting or insertion into graveyard orbit. The new launcher also includes a lengthened fairing up to 20 meters and a new dual launch system to accommodate larger satellites. Compared to an Ariane 5 ESA model, the payload to GTO increases by 15% to 11.5 tons and the cost per kilogram of each launch is projected to decline by 20%. Originally known as the Ariane 5 ECB, was to have its first flight in 2006. However, the failure of the first ESA flight in 2002, combined with a deteriorating satellite industry, caused ESA to cancel development in 2003. Development of the Vinci engine continued, though at a lower pace. The ESA Council of Ministers agreed to fund development of the new upper stage in November 2008. In 2009, EATS Astrium was awarded a 200 million euro contract, and on April 10, 2012, received another 112 million euro contract to continue development of the Ariane 5 Me with total development effort expected to cost 1 billion euros. On November 21, 2012, ESA agreed to continue with the Ariane 5 Me to meet the challenge of lower priced competitors. It was agreed the Vinci upper stage would also be used as second stage of a new Ariane 6, and further commonality would be sought. Ariane 5 Me qualification flight is scheduled for mid-2018, followed by gradual introduction in TAS service. On December 2, 2014, ESA decided to stop funding the development of Ariane 5 Me and instead focus on Ariane 6 which should have a lower cost per launch and allow more flexibility in the payloads using two or four P120C solid boosters depending on total payload mass. Work on the Ariane 5 EAP motors has been continued in the Vega program. The Vega first stage engine, the P80 engine, is a shorter derivation of the EAP. The P80 booster casing is made of filament wound graphite epoxy, much lighter than the current stainless steel casing. A new composite steerable nozzle has been developed while the thermal insulation material and a narrower throat improve the expansion ratio and subsequently the overall performance. Additionally, the nozzle now has electromechanical actuators which have replaced the heavier hydraulic ones used for thrust vector control. These developments will probably later make their way back into the Ariane program. The incorporation of the Escape B with the improvements to the solid motor casing on an upgraded Vulcan engine would deliver to LEO. This would be developed for any lunar missions but the performance of such a design may not be possible if the higher Max-Q fourth launch of this rocket poses a constraint on the mass delivered to orbit. The design brief of the next generation rocket called for a lower cost and smaller rocket capable of launching a single satellite of up to 6.5 tons to GTO. However, after several permutations the finalized design was nearly identical in performance to the Ariane 5 focusing instead on lowering fabrication costs and launch prices. Development is projected to cost 4 billion euros. Its first test launch is set for not earlier than July 16, 2020. Ariane 6 is projected to be launched for about 70 million euros per flight or about half of the Ariane 5 current price. Ariane 5's first test flight, Ariane 5 Flight 501, on June 4, 1996 failed with the rocket self-destructing 37 seconds after launch because of a malfunction in the control software. A data conversion from 64-bit floating point value to 16-bit signed integer value to be stored in a variable representing horizontal bias caused a processor trap, operand error because the floating point value was too large to be represented by a 16-bit signed integer. The software was originally written for the Ariane 4 where efficiency considerations the computer running the software had an 80% maximum workload requirement, 
led to four variables being protected with a handler while three others, including the horizontal bias variable, were left unprotected because it was thought that they were physically limited or that there was a large margin of safety. The software, written in ADA, was included in the Ariane 5 through the reuse of an entire Ariane 4 subsystem despite the fact that the particular software containing the bug, which was just a part of the subsystem, was not required by the Ariane 5 because it has a different preparation sequence than the Ariane 4. The second test flight, L502, on October 30, 1997, was a partial failure. The Vulcan nozzle caused a roll problem leading to premature shutdown of the core stage. The upper stage operated successfully, but it could not reach the intended orbit. A subsequent test flight, L503, on October 21, 1998, proved successful and the first commercial launch, L504, occurred on December 10, 1999 with the launch of the XMM Newton X-ray Observatory satellite. Another partial failure occurred on July 12, 2001 with the delivery of two satellites into an incorrect orbit, at only half the height of the intended GTO. The ESA Artemis telecommunications satellite was able to reach its intended orbit on January 31, 2003, through the use of its experimental ion propulsion system. The next launch did not occur until March 1, 2002, when the Invisit environmental satellite successfully reached an orbit above the Earth in the 11th launch. At it was the heaviest single payload until the launch of the first ATV on March 9, 2008, 19,360 kilograms. The first launch of the ESA variant on December 11, 2002 ended in failure when a main booster problem caused the rocket to veer off course, forcing its self-destruction three minutes into the flight. Its payload of two communications satellites, Stentor and Hotbird 7, valued at about 630 million euros was lost in the ocean. The fault was determined to have been caused by a leak in coolant pipes allowing the nozzle to overheat. After this failure, Ariane Space SA delayed the expected January 2003 launch for the Rosetta mission to February 26, 2004, but this was again delayed to early March 2004 due to a minor fault in the foam that protects the cryogenic tanks on the Ariane 5. As of June 2017, the failure of the first HESA launch was the last failure of an Ariane 5, since then. All subsequent launches have been successful, with 82 consecutive successes tat stretch back to April 9, 2003 with the launch of INSAT 3A in Galaxy 12 satellites. On September 27, 2003 the last Ariane 5G boosted three satellites, including the first European lunar probe, SMART-1, in Flight 162. On July 18, 2004 an Ariane 5G Plus boosted what was at the time the heaviest telecommunications satellite ever. Onik F2, weighing almost. The first successful launch of the Ariane 5 S took place on February 12, 2005. The payload consisted of the exterior military communications satellite, a slosh sat small scientific satellite and a MaxSat B2 payload simulator. The launch had been originally scheduled for October 2004, but additional testing and the military requiring a launch at that time of a Helios 2A observation satellite, delayed the attempt. On August 11, 2005, the first Ariane 5 Gs, featuring the Ariane 5 S's improved solid motors, boosted Tycon 4 Ship Star 1, the heaviest telecommunications satellite to date at, into orbit. On November 16, 2005, the third Ariane 5 S launch, the second successful S launch, took place. It carried a dual payload consisting of Spaceway F2 for Direct TV and Telkom 2 for PT Telekomunikasi of Indonesia. This was the rocket's heaviest dual payload to date, at more than. On May 27, 2006, an Ariane 5 ESA rocket set a new commercial payload lifting record of 8.2 tons. The dual payload consisted of the TICOM 5 and SATMEX 6 satellites. On May 4, 2007, the Ariane 5 ESA set another new commercial record lifting into transfer orbit the Aster-1 Leader and Galaxy-17 communication satellites with a combined weight of 8.6 tons, and a total payload weight of 9.4 tons. This record was again broken by another Ariane 5 ESA, launching the Skynet 5B and Star-1C1 satellites, on November 11, 2007. The total payload weight for this launch was On March 9, 2008 the first Ariane 5 S ATV was launched to deliver the first ATV called Jules Verne to the International Space Station. The ATV was the heaviest payload ever launched by a European rocket, 
providing supplies to the space station with necessary propellant, water, air and dry cargo. This was the first operational Ariane mission which involved an engine restart in the upper stage. The SATV Astas EPS upper stage was restartable while the SA HM7B engine was not. On July 1, 2009, an Ariane 5 ESA launched Air Star 1, now Echo Star T1, which was then, at, the largest and most massive commercial telecommunications satellite ever built at that time until being overtaken by Telstar 19 Vantage, at, launched aboard Falcon 9. On October 28, 2010, an Ariane 5 ESA launched Utelsat's web, part of its W series of satellites, and Broadcasting Satellite System Corporation. BSATS set 3B satellites in orbit. But the web satellite failed to operate shortly after the successful launch and was written off as a total loss due to an oxidizer leak in the satellite's main propulsion system. The BSAT 3B satellite, however, is operating normally. On April 22, 2011, the Ariane 5 ESA flight VA201 broke a commercial record, lifting Yasat 1A and Intelsat New Dawn with a total payload weight of 10,064 kg to transfer orbit. This record was later broken again during the launch of Ariane 5 ESA flight VA208 on August 2, 2012, lifting a total of 10,182 kg into the planned geosynchronous transfer orbit which was broken again six months later on flight VA-212 with 10,317 kg sent towards geosynchronous transfer orbit. In June 2016 the GTO record was raised to 10,730 kg, on the first rocket in history that carried a satellite dedicated to financial institutions. The payload record was pushed a further 5 kg to on 24th of August with the launch of Intelsat 33E and Intelsat 36. On June 1, 2017, the payload record was broken again to carrying via SAT-2 and UTELSAT-172B. On January 25, 2018, an Ariane 5 ESA launched SES-14 and ALYA-3 satellites. About 9 minutes and 28 seconds after launch, a telemetry loss occurred between the rocket and ground controllers. It was later confirmed, about 1 hour and 20 minutes after launch, that both satellites were successfully separated from the upper stage and were in contact with their respective ground controllers, but that their orbital inclinations were incorrect as the guidance systems might have been compromised. Up therefore, both satellites conducted orbital makeup procedure, extending commissioning time. SES-14 needed about four weeks longer than planned commissioning time, meaning that entry into service was reported early September instead of July. Nevertheless, SES-14 is still expected to be able to meet the design lifetime, since it was originally to be launched on a Falcon 9 rocket and has more propellant reserve as the Falcon 9 usually deploys geostationary satellites into a high inclination orbit that requires more work from the payload to reach their final geostationary orbit. The Alya 3 was also confirmed healthy after more than 12 hours without further statement, and like SES-14, Alya 3's maneuvering plan was also revised to still fulfill the original mission. As of February 16, 2018, Alya-3 was approaching the intended geostationary orbit, after series of recovery maneuvers had been performed. The investigation showed that invalid inertial units azimuth value had sent the vehicle 17 degrees off course but to the intended altitude, they had been programmed for the standard geostationary transfer orbit of 90 degrees when the payloads were intended to be 70 degrees for this supersynchronous transfer orbit mission, 20 degrees off norm. This mission anomaly marked the end of 82nd consecutive success streak since 2003. Ariane 5 rockets have accumulated 101 launches since 1996, 96 of which were successful, yielding a success rate. Between April 2003 and December 2017, Ariane 5 flew 82 consecutive missions without failure, but suffered a partial failure in January 2018. All launches are from Kuru L-3. Ariane 5 had 18 missions on its launch manifest, including 15 for pairs of satellites. Up to seven launches were planned for the year 2018, five with dual communications satellites due to geosynchronous orbit, one with four Galileo satellites, and one carrying the Bibi Colombo mission. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.